match of the week. We're at Rocking Road this balmy Tuesday evening where the Poppies play host to Kingstonian. The Poppies anxious to bounce back after that horrible defeat against Hereford last Saturday. Kingstonian, on the other hand, have had two good wins in the last two games. Ex-Diamonds player Dave Leeworthy has scored five goals in those two games, so he's going to be a real threat. Peter Morris was very disappointed with his defence last Saturday. He'll be looking for a much better effort this evening. The Poppies desperate to get back on the winning way. Well, the Poppy's second home game of the season. After a pretty shaky start, if the truth's been known, the Poppy's fans full of expectation this season and uh, they'd expected to see their team win, but uh, they haven't so far. And uh, Peter Morris has made one or two changes for this evening's game. Paul Abraham starts and it's uh, a great treat for the Poppy's fans to see Lee Hudson back in the starting lineup after his long layoff through uh, injury. Nicky Hayden, the uh, other new signing in the summer from Colchester, can't get in the starting lineup. He's on the bench. The Pop is up against a very good Kingstonian side. They did well last season. They won the trophy, of course, and there's lots of familiar names there, notably Dave Lee Worthy, who I mentioned before, ex diamonds player who's scored a hatful of goals already this season, and Tarkan Mustafa, of course, an old favourite at uh, Rockingham Road. Jeff Chappell never puts out a bad side and uh, they've had a terrific uh, week winning their last two games, scoring four goals in each of them. So the Poppies really will have their work cut out. But uh, although a little bit of nervousness, I think, in the camp, they have got to approach this game with some confidence and uh, with the handshakes all round and smiles. Well, uh, Peter Morris, I'm sure, will have said to his team, go out there and give the fans something to get excited about and get the season underway. Well, the game will be underway in just a second. Mr Downs, the referee from Shefford, gets the play moving. The first attack leads to a throw in for Kingstonian and it's Colin Luckett knocking the ball forward. But no trouble for Colin Valden there, finding Adam Solick, giving him an early touch and the game having to settle down. Kingstonian will be brimming with confidence, although uh, their away record so far this season isn't as good as their home. The Pop is uh, having only played one home game, that draw, the opening game of the season against Northwich, and the fans will be expecting better than that this evening. But it's Kingstonian knocking the ball forward now from that free kick, headed for Phil Wingfield, but uh, it comes to Carl Adams. He plays it out wide, but... Uh, Picked up easily there by Kingstonian. Craig Norman trying to clear up. Oh, there's a bad tackle by Jeff Pitcher, but the referee saw nothing wrong with it, and here's Pitcher coming forward. Dink in there to Marshall. Now, Lee Worthy, Lee Worthy shoots. Oh, well, it came off the post, and I think everybody had stopped to see that that had gone into the net. We've only been playing about 90 seconds, and that's a real let-off for the Poppies. Dave Lee Worthy scored five goals in the last two games, and he was ever so close to getting another one just there, the referee penalising Matt Fisher there for a foul and uh, it's Kingstonian who've certainly had the better of the start lovely ball in from there from Pitcher and there's Lee Worthy with a goal at his mercy everybody stops and it comes back off the post into the grateful hands of Adam Solid. but here's a dangerous free kick, knocked in there but comfortably taken this time by Solid. and uh, the Poppies just need to regroup, it's very early in the game but it's Kingstonian who certainly started in the more enterprising fashion. Solit knocks the ball forward. But it's a Kingstonian defender who clears it away only for a Poppies throw in. Craig Norman to take that. But the Poppies haven't really got into their stride at all yet. All the attacking options coming from Kingstonian. But uh, apart from that chance to Lee Worthy, Adam Solit hasn't had to make a save. Now, here's Lee Hudson trying to create something, but the ball not back there to Farrelly. Well, now, he's picked that up, and it looked to me like a back pass from Colin Luckett. The fans certainly thought so. The referee uh, didn't notice it, so the play carries on. Paul Cox finding Lee Hudson. Good layoff from Hudson to Abrams. Nice ball up the line from him, and there's Sam Banya. Gets away from... Mark Harris, but not able to control the ball. Poppy's fans fairly quiet just at the minute. They haven't had too much to shout about. The game really hasn't settled down into any sort of pattern. Both sides looking uh, good in parts, but then 
giving the ball away unnecessarily. There's crowd behind the Cowper Street end, arms folded. There's not too much getting excited about. Nice layoff by Lee Worthy there to Luckett. Luckett trying to find Dwight Marshall. Good player, Marshall. He was Plymouth's top scorer last season. And uh, by all accounts, has started pretty sharply for his new club, this. But it's uh, solid with a long clearance there. The ball put out for a throw in. Paul Abraham's playing on this uh, right side of midfield. What I've seen of Abraham's suggests that he's got a lot of talent. Experienced player as well. About 140 league games for Colchester and Brentford. He finds Sam Banya, who's uh, learning all the time. Abraham's there trying to create an opening, but uh, succeeds only in winning the corner. But better this from the poppies. Ball to the near post from Carl Adams, cleared away easily. And there's Abraham's again, but he loses out uh, there to Marshall. It comes back to Paul Cox, who sends it straight back into the area. But uh, Lee Hudson penalised there for pushing on Tarkan Mustafa. There's been a few fans travelled up this uh, Tuesday evening for the game from uh, Surrey. Perhaps not as many as the away team would have hoped, but uh, they're being as vocal as they can. And the referee penalising Matt Fisher again there for a foul on Wingfield. Bit of pushing. The free kick taken quickly by Jeff Pitcher to Wingfield to look it. Little build-up play this by Kingstonian. Marshall and uh, Patterson interchanging. And uh, Carl Adams this time penalised. And it's still Gary Patterson trying to find his uh, teammate, but it goes only to McNamara. Back with Kingstonian, though. The ball knocked forward, but uh, for all their possession, apart from that early incident, they haven't uh, troubled Alan, uh, Adam Solit in the Poppy's goal. But equally, the Kettering uh, players have not caused Steve Farrelly to many problems either. So there's a lot of huff and puff, but not uh, too much goal mouth action for the fans just at the minute. But here's Farrelly now, that back pass from Matt Crossley. Under pressure from Banya. Oh, and now he doesn't get the ball away. Here's uh, Adams. Adams to McNamara. McNamara over the bar there. He was leaning back. He really had a bit more time, I think, to get... Uh, Himself under control for that shot. Good chance that for the poppies. Good work by Banya, putting Farrelly under pressure. That created the opening and a good ball in there from Adams. And that was a good chance for McNamara. He'll be disappointed he didn't hit the target and ho open his account. He scored four goals in the first four games last season. He hasn't scored yet. But it's Wingfield coming forward now. Trying to get a shot in, blocked away by Paul Cox. And, uh, well, that's livened the fans up a little bit. Chances at both ends, but it's still Kingstonian coming forward. Wayne Duke trying to clear the ball away. Eventually, Carl Adams does to Lee Hudson. Lee Hudson tripped by Gary Patterson there. Free kick to Kettering. It's a good midfield battle, but uh, both sides, I'm sure, would welcome a goal. The Kettering fans, of course, hoping against hope that it's Kettering who get it first. But it's Kingstonian coming forward. They're playing a lot down this left-hand side. Can't really look at seeing a lot of the ball, as is Phil Wingfield. But uh, Lee Worthy losing out to Wayne Duke there. But Carl Adams gives the ball away, and we can hear the groans from the crowd that uh, they're not really that satisfied with this Kettering performance. The passing isn't as crisp as it should be. There's still quite a lot of uh, inexperienced players. Where's one of them? Sam Banya shooting from a very tight angle there. Steve Farrelly would have uh, been very disappointed to have conceded anything. And I fancy that if he'd had a closer look, he might have seen Lee Hudson in a good position. There's Hudson moving forward and uh, ball across the face of the goal would surely have been a better option. But Sam Banya is uh, young and raw, inexperienced. He's got a lot to learn, but... Uh, Shown promise already in the opening games of this season. Jeff Pitch has been around for a long time. Classy player. He finds uh, Stewart for Kingstonian. Stewart again knocking the ball forward, but that's uh, 
meat and drink to Adam Solit. And uh, again, a promising move by Kingstonian. Breaks down. Solit gets the ball back in the Kingstonian half. Carl Adams challenging Patterson there. But it's Mustafa now. Nice ball there to Lee Worthy, who uh, tries and feeds Wingfield, but he couldn't uh, get away from his defender. And there's Harris playing it across the back four to Matt Crossley. His long ball forward goes to his uh, counterpart, Paul Cox for Kettering. And back to Solid, who clears up field. And it's a uh, ball bouncing around up in the air like a ping pong at the minute. The fans, I'm sure, would prefer to see the ball played on the ground, but it's not always easy. Nice bit of skill there from Paul Abrahams to win the throw in. Takes the throw in and uh, plays it back to Paul Cox. Paul Cox knocking it forward. But again, it doesn't find a catching player. It's a bit aimless. Here's Hudson, though, trying to pick up some pieces. Abraham's two, but uh, he's running into a blind alley and Wingfield brings the ball away with some pace as well, being uh, shadowed by Matt Fisher, but he just delayed the pass too much as a result. Marshall are judged offside. We can see again the pass just delayed long enough for the Poppies defence to catch Marshall out. But it was a close thing that was and the Poppies will need to be wary of Marshall, he's a quick, nippy player. Pretty tough there by the looks of it, under that challenge as well from Carl Adams. Wayne Duke here, only 19, he's been very impressive since he joined Kettering. He was playing for Gedling United last season, having been released by Notts County. Gedling United, the same team that uh, bred Matt Fisher. So, uh, well, perhaps another thoroughbred in the making. Who knows? But uh, it's Lee Hudson now trying to weave his way through. Hudson delighted to be back in the starting lineup after that long layoff. Probably still not quite match fit, but uh, there's nothing like playing football. But it's Kingstonian with Colin Luckett. He's probably seen the ball more than anybody else in the half so far. But uh, his intended pass to Lee Worthy, well cut out by Abrahams, who in turn loses out in that challenge to Gary Patterson. And not too much for the fans to shout about at the minute. Kingstonian probably having the better of the possession, but neither side creating too much in the way of chances. Here's Brett McNamara trying to create something. Being harried by Mustafa, winning the free kick. Plays it quickly across to Paul Cox. Paul Cox coming forward with some purpose, chipping the ball in. And here's Banya now. Back. Can Banya turn? He, oh, he turns one way and then the other, but couldn't get the shot in. He was closed down well there by number five, Simon Stewart. He wins the corner, but if he'd been able to react just a split second quicker, the opening might have been there. He got his opening goal against uh, Hereford, but uh, here he's trying to get in on the end of that corner. Abraham is trying to get the ball back into the box, but eventually it's cleared away. Yes, as I was saying, Sam Bandy scored his opening goal against Hereford last Saturday. That will have given him a lot of confidence, but uh, he's still got to get used to life in the conference. He's come up from a couple of leagues below, and uh, it's bound to take him a bit of time. As it is, it's all a bit uh, scrappy at the minute. Colin Vowden trying to open it up, playing it to Craig Norman, who uh, knocks it forward. And the ball comes out here to Abrahams. Good cross in from Abrahams. Not on McNamara again, and Joe for the bar. Diving header from McNamara. Good cross there by Paul Abrahams, and another good chance for McNamara. That's his second, and he'll be disappointed again not to get the ball on target. Lovely cross, flicked on there, I think, by Kingstonian defender, and McNamara just heading too high. Poppy's still coming forward, though. Good ball in from Carl Adams. And the Poppies are certainly playing better than they probably have in any game this season. They look much more purposeful. And uh, Jeff Pitcher, I think, is uh, showing a bit of frustration, having been penalised for the tackle on Paul Abrahams. And uh, he goes into the book, the first name in the book this evening. And uh, 
He'll probably be a bit unhappy about that, but we all know what it's like in the conference. If you transgress, your name goes in the book. Here comes the free kick. Craig Norman shooting, deflected there and all. Just taken away from Colin Vowden. I don't know whether Sam Banya got a touch on that, but Colin Vowden was lurking at that uh, far post there, but seemed to be beaten by the bounce at any rate. And another chance for the Poppies goes uh, a begging. And they've certainly, in these last moments, had their chances. And they're beginning to apply a bit of pressure on this Kingstonian side. And make no mistake, Kingstonian are a decent side. Jeff Chappell is vastly experienced and he's put together a good squad of players. And uh, the Poppies have had as tough an opening to the season as any side in the conference, I fancy. They've still got some hard games coming up, but this is no pushover. Uh, but at the minute, it's the Poppies who are creating the better chances. And there's Banny with an overhead kick. And uh, Lee Hudson, oh, trying to get his boot round that. It was a speculative effort by Banya. Would have been a fantastic goal had it come off. But when it didn't, it just fell to Lee Hudson. And, well, perhaps his match sharpness isn't quite there. And he couldn't wrap his boot round that. And it goes high over the bar. So another good chance for Kettering. And uh, one or two more smiles about on their fans' faces. Craig Norman, strong as ever in the air, but the ball knocked back by Crossley, only to Vowden, Vowden to Fisher, to Adams. And there's a push in the back on uh, Lee Hudson, I think. Uh, yes, it's Matt Crossley who's guilty of that uh, foul. Well, the arm's still folded there behind uh, the Cowper Street. Well, I got that wrong. It wasn't Mac Matt Crossley at all. Simon Stewart finding his name in uh, the book. The second Kingstonian player to be booked uh, tonight. And it's another free kick for Kettering. Adams knocking the ball in. That escapes everybody and goes uh, out of play. So the Poppies in the second half of this first half. Uh, as the referee brings it to an end, the Poppies have done well. It was Kingstonian who had the early chances, but the Poppies have come back and created their own. And I dare say Peter Morris will be much happier with that uh, first half performance, but he'll certainly want some goals in the second half. At half time, it's Kettering Town nil, Kingstonian nil. Pegasus Software, the business accounting and management software provider, is proud to sponsor North Ants TV's coverage of the Poppies. Pegasus Software, accounting for your success. You've still got that second-hand car, haven't you? And it's making your life a misery. That's because you still haven't come to Jocks of Burton Latimer, the second-hand Deu specialist. Buy a used Deu under three years old with less than 60,000 miles on the clock and the car comes with free AA cover and the full manufacturer's warranty intact. We'll even throw in six months road tax. Only Jocks can provide total peace of mind for the modern motorist when you choose from our vast selection of quality used cars and our nil deposit finance scheme. I've told you once and I'll tell you again, come to Jocks of Button Latmer and leave the running to us. For a fantastic day we deal, there is really no alternative. Everybody's coming to La Pasta, a wine bar that's value for money with drinks promotions each month, maximum sounds and a party atmosphere. Once we've wet your appetite, come inside and find the pulse. Let it take you to the ultimate in entertainment. The only meeting place that offers to take you all the way and leave you begging for more. We'll intoxicate your senses with the state-of-the-art lighting equipment and supply you with the best DJs and vibes about. With live acts each week, where else gives you top value and top entertainment? Two for the price of one is our promise to you. La Poste and the Pulse, feel the beat. Chill out on Sundays and ease into Mondays, only at The Pulse. Now open every Sunday evening from 9 o'clock till midnight. Enjoy a live band every Sunday night in La Poste. Then come through to The Pulse for top sounds from our resident DJ, Ben Brett. It's the Sunday night essential, and admission's only £3. We've got regular drink of the night promotions to blow your socks off. So don't be left out in the cold. Come into the warm every Sunday night at The Pulse. Rockingham Road, Corby. It's the place to be. Pegasus Software, the business accounting and management software provider, is proud to sponsor North Ants TV's coverage of the Poppies. Pegasus Software, accounting for your success.
So all this game needs now is a goal to get uh, the fans excited, whether they're from Kettering or Kingstonian. Isn't going to matter too much, I don't suppose, for the impartial observer, but uh, the Kettering fans really are desperate to see their side get three points in the bag at the start of the season. Once games start drifting away, then the confidence sags and uh, then, well, a bit of despondency sets in amongst the players and amongst the crowd. So Kettering will want to get their first win under their belts as soon as they can. And, uh, well, they perhaps won't have a better chance in the early stages of the season than against this uh, Kingstonian side, who have played very well, but uh, the poppies have certainly matched them in just about every department. So we're underway again in any event. It's uh, Kingstonian with the ball being knocked forward to Dwight Marshall back here again on this... Uh, Left-hand side, Wingfield, who uh, had a good first half for Kingstonian, was behind a lot of their good work, but he loses out there to Abrahams. Fisher playing the ball forward, but uh, Sam Bannier didn't really anticipate that ball, and Kingstonian able to knock it back into the danger area. Marshall, in isolation there, not able to create anything. So solid. Moves the ball forward again, high into the night sky. It's pitch black now over Rockingham Road. The flood li floodlights are blazing. Already one or two fans looking at the watches. I don't know whether they're ready to go home or whether they're just getting more and more anxious that Kettering haven't been able to break the deadlock. And still they haven't. It's uh, pretty much like the first half, the opening few minutes of this second half. Kingstonian having the possession but it's pretty much a midfield battle but a good ball there by Pitcher through to Wingfield he plays it close into Marshall good block there by Colin Vowden he was in the right place at the right time he says it was a goal kick the referee doesn't agree the Kingstonian fans uh, making their sounds heard here comes the corner headed away there but the referee spots an infringement that's a free kick to Kettering and the danger passes Adam Solit now knocks the ball forward. It's won by Sam Banya there, but uh, there's Carl Adams knocking the ball in and Steve Farrelly having to come out of his area and head the ball away. Falls to Patterson. Good block there by Adams. Keeps the pressure on. Duke knocking the ball in. And here's Adams again. Adams feeds McNamara. Here's McNamara. Good cross for McNamara. He's headed away. Here comes Wayne Duke, and it's Wayne Duke, and Wayne Duke shoots! And there it is, that's the opening goal for Kettering. 50 minutes gone, and Wayne Duke, young Wayne Duke, opens his account, his first goal in Kettering Colours. Good cross by McNamara, but no apparent danger until Duke stepped in there, took that very well from 20 yards, good right foot shot, gave Farrelly no chance at all. Well, that young man will be delighted. He's played well in the first half and he's capped that now in the opening moments of the second half with a goal that could be so important for Kettering. It's been a while coming. The fans have been patiently waiting for it and, uh, well, they've been rewarded for that patience. Long shot there throw from Kingstonian, trying to get back into it straight away. Mark Harris shooting from distance but not troubling Adam Solid. Peter Morris thinks very highly of Wayne Duke, thinks that he's picked up a real little gem, and uh, on tonight's performance, he's not far wrong. Now the Poppies will be wanting to apply a bit more pressure, having got one goal ahead, they need to get another. It's the first time they've been ahead this season, and we know last season that they uh, were very difficult to beat once they got their noses in front. Hardly ever during last season did the Poppies give up a lead. They haven't uh, been able to show this season whether that sort of form will continue because uh, in every game they've played, they've uh, been behind. But they're not tonight now. But here's danger for the Poppies. A lot of bodies in that catching penalty area, but they break quickly here. And here's goal scorer Duke playing the ball forward. But uh, Lee Hudson beaten to it there. And here comes Pitcher. Good player, Pitcher, trying to 
Not the ball through to Lee Worthy, but Paul Cox plays it back to Adam Solit. And here's uh, McNamara, but he's a judge to have handled that ball. And there's a little bit of shenanigans there between Brett McNamara and Gary Patterson. All a bit unnecessary. And the referee wanting to have a chat. I think with both of those players, it was really something and nothing. But the free kick is Kinstonians. It's Winfield knocking the ball in there. But Adam Solit gathers that in really quite comfortably. And uh, some applause behind the Cowper Street goal for the Poppies. And they're deserving it now. They're uh, playing much more brightly in this second half. They uh, came back into the first half strongly after Kingston had looked the better side in the early exchanges. But they're playing some good football now. There's Hudson. Good ball there. And there's Wayne Duke coming in. But um, Mark Harris conceding the corner and glad to do it. Wayne Duke getting in a good position there and a nice floated ball from Carl Adams. So corner for Kettering. Carl Adams knocking it forward, but uh, straight into the hands of Steve Farrelly and he gets the ball out quickly to Lee Worthy. Knocking the ball forward, looking for Marshall, running onto it. And there's uh, Wayne Duke covering there he's been all over the place but uh, he slips there and there's Marshall all fine save by Adam Solit you can't give that Mar man Marshall half a chance and Adam Solit was very quick to narrow the angle there good stop alert goalkeeping terrific effort and it's the poppies coming forward again now Carl Adams knocking the ball long to Marshall Oh, and Marshall uh, concedes the corner. A bit unnecessarily there, I think. So here's Carl Adams knocking the ball to the near post. Oh, it's Craig Norman. It's in. Number two for Kettering. 59 minutes gone. That's two in nine minutes. But the Kingstonian defence are protesting. Something rotten here. And now why is that? The ball goes up. Oh, I think they're claiming that Craig Norman handled that. Well, it's very difficult to see from this angle. Certainly his arm was up in the air, but it looked to me as if he got his head onto it. And, I mean, it was goal-bound anyway, whether it touched his hand on the way. Who knows? Only he knows, although there's uh, severe protestations from the Kingstonian players, and they're going to find themselves incurring the wrath of the referee if they're not very careful. The referees have been told this season to stand no dissent at all. Matt Crossley, the uh, Kingstonian captain, I suppose, is entitled to make the protests on behalf of his side. Doesn't much matter, the goal has been given. And there's Craig Norman getting up, undefended there. Well, did it touch his hand? I don't know. The referee didn't think so. And because he didn't think so, it's catching two, Kingstonian nil. That's really the cushion the poppies were looking for. And, uh, well, if they hadn't relaxed enough, perhaps they... Uh, can just uh, begin to enjoy it now. The pressure off a little bit with that two-goal lead. Two goals in nine minutes, and, uh, well, it's made it a much better-looking scoreline as far as Kettering are concerned, that's for sure. There's Sam Bania trying to create something, but he loses out, and Kingstonian rock back on their heels, no doubt about that, as a result of that second, perhaps crucial goal for Kettering. But they're... Uh, not giving up, you wouldn't expect them to. There's still plenty of time left for them to come back into the game. They've got to throw in on the left-hand side. It's thrown into the box, headed away there. Jeff uh, Pitcher knocking it in, but Colin Vowden getting the ball away. Patterson there, out here again, and there's the ball knocked in. Lee Worthy, Lee Worthy is in the net! Within the space of just a couple of minutes of the Poppies getting that two-goal lead, Dave Lee Worthy gets his sixth goal in three games. Well, there didn't appear to be much danger. He's heading from 12 yards or so, and Adam Solit will be disappointed that he wasn't able to get to that, but it was a beautifully placed header right in the top corner. So within two minutes, as I say, Kingstonian back in the game. It's Kettering two, Kingstonian one. And uh, the Poppies, from a position of relative comfort, have now just got that one goal hit lead again. And here's Marshall. Can he get to it? No, he can't. And Abrahams clears the danger. Well, for a moment, all was rosy in the Poppies' garden. It might still be here now because here's Sam Banya 
pulling away from the defender. Oh, there's Lee Hudson. That ball bobbled just in front of him and bounced up waist tight. He perhaps had a moment or two more than he thought, but uh, there's a lack of match fitness about Lee Hudson's play this evening. Nothing that a good couple of games won't put right, but, uh, oh, my goodness, perhaps he would have hoped to have done a bit better than that. Arguably, as well, Banya might have gone on himself. But as it is, it's Wayne Duke who's coming forward at some pace, crossing the ball in. It's cleared away. And the pop is now looking for a third. They want that two-goal cushion again. McNamara finding Banya. Banya turning, turning well. His shot's blocked and... Uh, it's blocked away. There's Duke again. Oh, my. That was almost exactly the same position from where he scored the first goal for Ketri. But this time, high, wide, not very handsome, over the bar, just on the edge of the D. Another good chance for Duke, but he's getting into position well. We've got a substitution now. Phil Wingfield coming off. He's uh, had a good game for Kingstonian. And he's replaced by Eddie Akuamoa. He's a faithful old servant at Kingstonian. Been there for a long, long time. Scored a lot of goals for them as well. So uh, Jeff Chappell signalling his intent. He hasn't given up on his attacking options and will be anxious to get uh, back into the game. Well, they are that, just a goal behind. But since Kingstonian came up into the conference, Kettering have beaten them on every occasion except in that infamous game in the trophy last season when Kettering got a battering at uh, Kingstonian. But in the league, Kettering have got a 100% record against them and they'll be fighting every inch of the way to keep that 100% record going this evening. And there's Hudson playing the ball to Duke. And uh, not Duke, Paul Abrahams. They look very much alike, both good players. But he couldn't uh, find his man there and it's Kingstonian coming back now. But Paul Cox taking the ball away. So what belatedly the referee uh, judges that uh, Duke had committed a foul there. Dangerous position this for Ketrin. They'll have to be alert to defend it well. Ball being knocked into the box. Oh, it's headed away by Craig Norman. Craig Norman has this season taken an almighty battering. He's been kicked on the arm. He's had his head cut open, trampled on, but he gets up and uh, grits his teeth and carries on. It was a good header there, diving in when uh, other people might not have been quite so brave. But Kingstonian still trying to come forward. Colin Vowden clearing up there, but it's still Kingstonian. Tarkan Mustafa not able to find one of his own men and the ball cleared downfield to Sambania, but goes out of play. Kingstonian throw. And here's Tarkan Mustafa. He's been kept very quiet by Brett McNamara. He's had a good game, McNamara, on this uh, left-hand side. Tarkan Mustafa, who uh, flattered to deceive a bit at uh, Kettering, but he did score the winning goal in the FA Trophy last season. And there's uh, a foul by Craig Norman, pulling down Gary Patterson. Another free kick, another dangerous position. Ball knocked in. And there's Lee Worthy. Oh, inches wide. Goodness me. That was inches wide, a back header there, and it looks as if Adam Solit's taken a bit of a knock. It was uh, Simon Stewart who went in after that uh, flick back header from Lee Worthy, but he succeeded only in colliding with uh, Adam Solit, and this doesn't look very good. Physio uh, Pete Lake signalling a substitution. I think we can see that back header. I'm not sure that Lee Worthy meant it as a goal-bound attempt, but it wasn't very far away. And that's a sorry sight for Kettering fans. Adam Solit limping off. He took a knock when he was in that collision with Stewart. And Steve Wilson gets his uh, first chance this season. 75 minutes gone in uh, this game. And uh, Stevie Wilson, who's as keen as mustard to play, but Adam Solit's just in such good form, he doesn't get a chance. He's got 15 minutes to prove his worth. Hopefully he won't have a save to make, but... Uh, Steve Farrelly might have to from uh, Lee Hudson's shot there, although I don't think Farrelly got a touch on it. Another good chance for Lee Hudson. He's getting into good positions. He just hasn't quite got his scoring boots on tonight. Here we see again, just across the face of the goal. And uh, not a bad effort, but uh, he'll be disappointed he hasn't been on the score sheet. 
as to perhaps Will Sambania, but he's coming forward here. He's holding off Tarkan Mustafa. He's a big, strong lad, is young Sam. Very popular with the fans. And there's Lee Hudson again with another good chance. Well, I think the Lee Hudson super fit of last season might have done a bit better then. And it is going to take him a few games, I'm sure, to get back into the swing of things. Peter Morris deciding that uh, it's time for a substitution, an outfield substitution. Sam Banya getting a tremendous round of applause from the fans. He's worked hard, perhaps hasn't had his best game tonight. He gives way to Nicky Hayden, who uh, will bolster up the midfield and the defence. Looks as if he's going into centre midfield. And uh, I'm sure that Peter Morris will have told him to make sure that Kingstonian don't get through. The pop is desperate in these last minutes to hang on to this lead. But it's Kingstonian trying to work something. Dwight Marshall not able to. Dispossessed by Wayne Duke. What a game he's had. Carl Adams too has played well and he plays it forward to Lee Hudson. Now what can Hudson make of this? Getting into the box. Shooting. Oh, and just shoots wide. But again, he's got into a good position and, uh, well, the referee saw a deflection there, which means that's a Ketrin corner. Knocked over by Adams. And there's Norman again, inches wide from his second goal. And he rose well there to head that ball, just, oh, shaving Farrelly's post. We can see it. another good corner from Adams. And uh, Farrelly would have had no chance of that had it been a foot or two nearer the goal. And uh, Jeff Chappell taking off Jeff Pitcher. Looks to be hobbling a little bit. He's giving way to Luke Basford. I must say, I don't know a great deal about him, except I can say he's a man mountain. He's absolutely huge. And uh, that will add aerial presence up front. But there's only about three minutes per stoppages to go for the poppies to hang on. They've had to battle very hard against... A good Kingstonian side, but uh, battle away they have. And here uh, is Carl Adams now. Oh, good play. Oh, and it's a lovely chip. Oh, and that's just over the bar. What a beautiful piece of skill by Carl Adams. He jinked to his left there. He's got a superb left foot. Here we see him strong in the tackle there. Lovely jink. And what a lovely chip that was. Steve Farrelly had no chance. And... Uh, Carl Adams, very, very unlucky. But only moments left. Now we're heading towards stoppage time. And the Poppies, very close to their first win of the season. And they've got to defend resourcefully here, though. Callum Vowden getting the ball away. Still with Kingstonian. And uh, back into the danger area, but uh, knocked away again. Only as far as Mustafa. Mustafa under pressure from Hayden, and Hayden gets the ball away. It's all hands to the pumps, and uh, they're keeping Kingston in at bay well. And indeed, they've done enough, because there goes the final whistle, and the relief amongst the Kettering fans. Well, it's there for all to see. It's been a terrific performance by the Poppies uh, this evening. They've worked very hard for this victory. None less than Wayne Duke, we can see there. His first goal, deservedly getting congratulations from Robbie Cook there. And uh, Lee Hudson, who's worked jolly hard as well. Saluting the uh, fans, the Poppies players, delighted with that. Craig Norman, the scorer of the what turned out to be the winner for Kettering. Good effort by them. Final score, Kettering 2, Kingstonian 1. Um, they're not a bad side at all. But I thought it was coming. I thought we had it at Hereford. I thought we threw three points away. We've had a good performance at Walking when we're down to nine men. So I think we've done fairly well, but it's nice to get three points. And looking at the season so far, I know it's only four games in, but four tough games. Reasonably satisfied with the start? Well, there's three or four new, newer players, younger players. I think they're going to acquit themselves very well. I thought young uh, Duke was the man of the match, and he has been previously. You know, but uh, Fisher's young, we've got one or two. Sam's learning the game. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased. I think we'll get better, hopefully. Uh, it's just the dreaded suspensions that. Uh, I worry about. Well, Wayne Duke, man of the match tonight. A terrific performance in your first goal for Kettering. Yeah, it's my, my first goal for a long time. I, I, I'm not really much of a goal scorer it, well, in my career that's, that's gone on so far, but it's nice to get one. First one, good goal as well. I enjoyed it. And you've uh, come into the conference, you've been used to playing at Notts County and then down at Gedling. What's it like to come into this league? How tough is it? 
It is a tough league. Uh, when I was at Notch, we all knew about the conference. We had a few players on loan at the conference that all said it's a tough league. I didn't realise that. It's a very physical league. From from what I, what I was used to for the reserves at Notch, it's, the gaffers like push me to get my, my body strength up for the year. Uh, he says it's a hard, strong league. You've got to be strong. Well, I wouldn't like to play in today's game. I mean, um, I, I love playing football. I love used to love getting close to people and get your footing. But here, nowadays, uh, I thought he pulled Fisher up here for nothing. I mean, all he's doing is trying to win the ball. Um, I don't think they can see a bad foul from one that isn't. Uh, but three great points. And how have you settled in at Kettering? They're some bunch of lads, aren't they? Oh, yeah, great bunch of lads. I'm loving it. It's, uh, well, I, I was at Gedlin. When the gaffer came, to, he, he rang me up. He says, I want to sign you. He says, Kettering, I was, well, I was delighted. And he offered me two years. Can't beat it. It's great here. And you got into the first team. The ambition to stay in the first team and yep, back definitely. into the football league with Kettering. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, so that's what uh, we're all pushing for. The lads, we want that league football. It's, it's important for us.